Welcome to the Grow Your Business and Grow Your Wealth podcast with Gary Helt. Gary is an expert in helping business owners put together a plan that will provide a better future for their businesses, themselves, and their families. On the podcast, Gary interviews other professionals who share his vision, and together they share secrets and strategies any business owner can use to build a better financial foundation for your business and your life. Hey, welcome back to the podcast. This week, our guest is Michael Bloom, who is with the Lake Law Firm. Welcome. Thanks for having me, Gary. So, Michael, what made you get into law? It was really my wife, uh, Tara, got me into it. Um, so she's been, you know, inspired by the law ever since high school. She was in mock trial in Bayou, in New Jersey. We went to Penn State together for undergrad. And from there, I switched from pre-med over to taking the LSATs and wound up in law school. And uh, the current, you know, position that I'm in with mass torts, there's a lot of overlap with science, with products liability. Um, so with defective products, including dangerous drugs and medical devices. Um, so it was a really nice overlap with that. And then, you know, with these other ventures going out, including uh, ERC, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. Yeah. What, um, so what, I mean, you're, Besides your wife, what is it that, that makes you get up in the morning and get excited about law? Being able to help as many people as I can um, competently and knowing what may have caused their injuries, alerting them to that. Um, so most of the people out there don't know why they're injured. Um from a from a product, um, you know, sp spraying weed killer now that they have cancer or taking a drug. Um, they may have had a heart attack or stroke or uh, wound up with another injury or a medical device, uh, why it failed in the first year or two and they have to have a revision or they had an infection because, you know, a device that was used during their operation. Um, so alerting consumers um, and potential clients to what may have caused their injury and letting them, them know that we're here and we understand what has caused their injury and that we'll fight for them uh, to bring them compensation. Gotcha. So, you know, we, we you mentioned uh, ERTC, which is the Employee Retention Tax Credit, um, you know, that, that came out, of, originally came out of the CARES Act. And there's a lot of, of businesses that are out there that don't know if they're eligible, what makes them eligible, um, because there's been multiple revisions of this. Um, can you kind of give us the, the, the basics on it? Sure. Uh, so the Employee Retention Tax Credit, or ERTC, or ERC for short, is a refundable tax credit through the IRS against certain employment taxes and qualified wages an employer has paid to employees during, during a certain time period. So that includes March 12th, 2020, going through September 30th, 2021. And this credit was authorized as part of the CARES Act, which stands for the Coronavirus Aid Relief and Economic Security Act. And it was to encourage uh, business owners to keep their employees on the payroll during the pandemic, specifically for those two years. Um, so with that, there's two different really main types of credits. In 2020, uh, business owners can claim up to $5,000 per full-time W-2 employee. And in 2021, it's up to $21,000, which is spread across the first three quarters of 2021, uh, $7,000 per quarter. And that adds up to a potential $26,000 per employee uh, through this ERC credit, uh, which the IRS does send the business owner a check. So, I mean, there, there's a lot of, I mean, we see a lot of advertisements out there, print, um, radio, TV, uh, internet, and everything else saying that, hey, if you stayed open through the pandemic, you you qualify for this. Can you talk on what the, what the qualifications are? Sure. Uh, so there's two different ways to qualify. Um, most business owners may have been approached by their uh, payroll accountants or their uh, their personal or CPAs that, you know, with their revenue, 
if they had revenue drops that they may qualify for ERC. That's one way to qualify. So in 2020, if you had more than a 50% drop in revenue over that quarter as compared to the same quarter in 2019, you can qualify for that credit in 2020. In 2021, if you can show a revenue drop of more than 20%, uh, from that quarter as compared to 2019, you can qualify. Most payroll accountants um, had stopped at that. So, you know, if you had an increase in revenue, which a lot of business owners did have, they said they wouldn't qualify for the ERC. There's a separate way to qualify for this. And we as a law firm has explored this through the IRS mandates. It's called the governmental mandates test. Um, so if the business owner was affected in a more than nominal way, by a governmental mandate at the local, state, or federal level, they can claim that credit in that quarter. Uh, so they have to show that that mandate affected them in that quarter and how it affected them. And we have a mandate questionnaire that we go through with the business owner. It's about 30 to 45 minutes in how their business you know, was before the pandemic and how they were affected in each of those six quarters um, that qualify through the ERC credit. So w when you're saying that they were affected, I mean, everybody was affected in one way, shape, form or another. But I mean, can you give us some examples of things that you mean by when you when you say that they're affected by it? Sure. So there's some large groups of governmental mandates um, that include supply chain disruptions, uh, limitations on the number of people you could have in a in an area, the inability to attend networking events, limited capacity to operate your inability to work with vendors, um, reduction to the services and goods that you were able to offer customers, reduction in hours uh, to the workplace and delayed or canceled projects due to COVID related disruptions. And these can even be out of state disruptions where it, that was affected in a different state that then had an effect on your business that you can tie back to yours locally. Supply chain issues in particular. Okay, so if I'm a, I'm a salesperson, and just for, for argument's sake, um, that, that the majority of um, my income as a, as a salesperson, and I mean this as a business, I'm a, I'm a, a wholesaler, um, and I meet people through networking events and things like that, obviously, we weren't able to do those networking events because, uh, you know, they weren't they weren't letting people people gather. Um, so, I was still able to do sales because of my old clients and things like that, and the price of everything went up. So, because the price went up, you know, my my gross sales are higher. But because I wasn't able to continue developing my business and the cost of things going up, so my Maybe my my top line went up, but my bottom line didn't increase because of this. It, am I able to qualify? Yes. Even if you had increased revenues, you could have even had higher revenues, but for the COVID-19 restrictions. And I had that myself with a lot of legal conferences um, out West, in different areas, they completely went remote right. due to COVID-19 restrictions, you know, local orders that you couldn't gather that many people, you know, these were one to 2,000 attorney, very large conferences. Of course, those were a no-go during the pandemic. They canceled right. all those. That was a large uh, a revenue opportunity for our firm and continues to be to attend those, um, to, right. to draw in additional clients and business. Um, so exactly what you said. So um, I guess, how are you guys combating the the CPAs of the world that are like, no, 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 it's, you know, you can, you know, you can only qualify if you were shut down or your income was reduced. Um, how, how are you guys combating the, the, the CPAs that are, that this is what they're saying? Because there's, there's a lot of them out there that are saying that. So it's a partial uh, governmental shutdown or a full governmental shutdown that had to affect your business. Um, so we go through its very detail intensive. We have to tie an actual mandate to what the business owner is saying. And then it's argument based. So as attorneys, we're able to make legal arguments on why that business owner's 
business was affected by that governmental mandate and why. So it's a it's a legal causation analysis that we do as attorneys, um, which is different than you know payroll companies and uh, CPAs. It's a, a differentiating factor. So the the, I mean again, I'm I'm sure you've seen a lot of the advertisements that are out there and things like that. What um. I guess w with those companies that are doing this, what um, if somebody came to you and said, hey, you know, sh why should I go with you guys versus one of these companies that, that's doing it, um, you know, real cheap? Uh, there's a few reasons. Uh, one being, you know, we provide a very safe and easy way to apply. Um, but what I mean by safe is, we provide complete audit defense. So in the case of an audit defense, if it's a desktop audit by the IRS, we provide all of the documentation to them, how the calculations were made. The audit usually goes away at that point. It's a very low audit risk for ERC at this point, um, between one to 5%. That we're told we haven't had any of our uh, mm -hmm. clients files audited at this point. And then if it does go into a full audit, uh, we defend them at no cost, which is very different than payroll companies and CPAs, which you would absolutely have to pay for. Um, in terms of easy applying, um, you just speak with one of our team members. It's 30 to 45 minutes after we, you know, agree to the, uh, con you know, the contingency fee agreement. And then pretty much from there, we're just asking for the documents that we need and we process that claim. We send it to the business owner to review and sign off on before we send anything to the IRS. And it's a, tax deductible contingency fee that we take only after the business owner has a check in hand from the IRS. So if they don't receive anything, we don't bill them. Um, so that makes, you know, that makes the business owner feel confident that they can move forward, especially with attorneys and all of the ethics rules that we have to comply with, especially and then the CPAs that we have on staff. It's really a good professional team that we're able to help out these business owners get the money back that they're due from the federal government because they kept their employees on the payroll. Right. I mean, what do you say? Um, it, Cause I've seen a lot of um, these companies out there that are doing this. And again, they're not, they're not attorneys. Um, and, and a lot of them, I doubt they're even CPAs um, that are collecting their collecting a fee up front before, you know, they're not, you know, they're not even, haven't even filed the the 941 access and you know they're trying to collect a fee um you know what do you say to to anybody who's dealing with that because because my thoughts are is that we're going to see some audits on this um just because just like every other thing that there's ever been um like this you know there's always there's always going to be audits because people are going to abuse this so it's it's a few things um, I would say for business owners to consider. How detail oriented um, do you want your do you want your vendor, which would be you know a payroll company, a CPA, or a law firm to to be? Um, as a law firm, we're super detail oriented, so there's multiple checks and quality checks that are done before, also with the client before anything is submitted. Nothing is. Um, stretch to make a credit happen. Um, it's just the, the truthful facts because we have to abide by as attorneys, the ethical rules, everything is truthful that we have to present um, with these other companies that aren't even CPAs. I've heard of a few of those. Um, and I have heard that they are, you know, submitting credits that may not line up uh, with what actually happened. And, you know, if there is an audit, uh, that business owner would probably be in some trouble, uh, you know, looking at that. And of course, they would have to pay out of pocket for that as well. Um, with our law firm, they don't have to worry about any of that because everything is truthfully and accurately documented. All the calculations are made, checked over by attorneys and CPAs, submitted to the business owner, and we provide the complete audit defense. Um, so it makes business owners feel very safe moving forward with this type of credit, especially that they don't have to pay anything until they already receive a check. So it's really just sending back part of that money that they've already received. Um, if you submit a large payment up front and you don't receive the credit that you were expecting for many different reasons, 
um, you may also be very disappointed because you put a lot of money up front to one of these companies and you have a much smaller than anticipated uh, credit that you get. So what are, what are the some of the things that are um, uh, that are excluded in this? Because it's not just, hey, I paid somebody, I, I get to have get money back. That's right. Yeah. So there's a number of exclusions. Um, the inclusions also include for profit businesses. Pretty much any business in the country does qualify. Um, for business owners, it needs to be at least one full-time W-2 employee. That does not include the business owner or any family members at the business. And 1099 uh, employees are excluded, also those that are self-employed. Um, so those are the main exclusions. Um and then what about the um because when when this first came out, you know, obviously if if you if you got the PPP loan, then you weren't eligible. Then they went back and they changed that. So can can you talk a little bit about that? That's correct. So if uh, a business took out draw one of PPP in 2020 or draw two in 2021, whatever amount was taken out, um, that's reduced per the quarter per employee um, in the calculations. So what we're seeing, you know, if if you take the maximum $26,000 per full-time W-2 employee, if you deduct out the PPP that most businesses did take, we're seeing about a $16,000 on average return per employee, which is still significant. It's much more than business owners uh, thought. And a lot of them were told that they don't qualify at all because they took out one or both draws uh, and they still can qualify and for a significant amount. Right. Um the in in going through the process of this um what about if a business started up in 2020 or they were actually shut down in 2020 would they still be eligible for the ERTC yes there's some uh startup provisions if they were a startup um we've had very few of those and they have to be under a certain threshold in revenue um, but yes, they can qualify as well. That's correct. What about if they shut down? Say they 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 tried to do this and they they actually closed the business. In yeah, I mean, as long as they had quarter twenty twenty. Yeah, so it starts in uh, quarter two of twenty twenty through quarter four of twenty twenty. So as long as they were had some type of qualifying wages for those employees during quarter two of twenty twenty, they can qualify um, for at least the five thousand dollar credit per employee in 2020 that's correct okay um and then when when they because they're getting this this refund and it is truly a refund of taxes that have already been paid in you're getting your getting your check um you still have to you have to go back and amend your prior year tax returns for this correct exactly exactly you do and we um advise our clients to speak with their local tax professional on that. Right. What um, have you guys seen, you know, have you, have you dealt with anybody that it's like, okay, they, they applied, they got the money, then they needed to go back and amend the tax return. Uh, you know, IRS, IRS loves giving out penalties and charging interest. Have you seen from that side of it, um, when somebody, you know, goes and amends their tax return and they got a tax bill of whatever, 10 grand, they pay it. Do you, are they getting, are you seeing them get hit with penalties and interest? And if so, have you guys helped anybody, uh, try to get those mitigated? I haven't seen that personally. Um, I okay. can ask around and follow up with you afterwards Okay. to get some more information on that. Um, but yeah, I would be interested in seeing the percentage of those and you know of course we would look into help mitigating those as well yeah because i would i would think that 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 with that the irs would have to give them a break from at minimum penalties yes um because you know reality is is that you know a lot of this happened after the fact anyway and they're saying hey you can go back and do it um so at at this point, if a client has um, hasn't applied for this at this point, how much longer do they have to apply for the ERTC? 
So it's three years from the original uh, filing date for that 941. Uh, so for the 2020 credit, um, which goes through those three quarters, you just have to qualify in any one of those three quarters to get the five grand. It's April 2024. And for 2021, it's April 2025, three years from that time period. Um, so there is still some time to apply. Uh, we are encouraging all clients to reach out now um, as things may change. Um, there was, I believe, $50 billion allocated uh, to this to this fund. Um, but as you know, with the government, things do change and guidelines and this program has also changed as well over time. Um, and, you know, what we're saying to business owners is this usually takes between three to eight months, sometimes, uh, you know, 12 months or longer to get the credit once it's submitted to the IRS. You want to get this credit back so you can reinvest it in your business now versus waiting, you know, another year or more. And who knows what will happen with the program. And of course you don't have that money to invest until you actually make the decision to move forward. And it's, and it's the business owner's money for keeping those employees on payroll. So. Right. Right. What, um, if, you know, another scenario here, if I've already applied for this and I didn't use an attorney like you guys, and, um, I'm not sure, say I used one of these other companies to, to do this, and I'm not sure, and I'm now kind of questioning, okay, did I really qualify because my revenue wasn't down? Can I come to you guys and you guys would help us, you know, go through it to make sure we did qualify? Yes, we could. We'd have a discussion with the business owner. We would just have to ask them to close out their claim or potential claim with whoever they're with. Mm -hmm. um, if something was already filed, one of the 941Xs, um, we can take a look at it if we're able to get additional credit over those quarters that were submitted and, of course, quarters that may not have been submitted as well. Um, so that's what we would do in that circumstance. Okay. Um, but what, what, what about if, um, you know, we've already, you know, we filed, we qualified for the 26000 per employee type thing. Um, if somebody wanted you guys to take a look at that and I guess help build their file in case they were to ever get audited, is that something you guys would help with? I mean, I know it's after the fact, so obviously you're not doing that. And I'm certainly assuming you guys are going to charge them some type of fee to do it. But is that something that you guys would do? We haven't been approached on that yet to supplement their file. We have been approached by quite a few business owners that have had their claims submitted um, through these payroll companies or and CPAs. And, you know, they said, you know, we were submitted for two or three quarters total. And it doesn't seem like we got the maximum amount for those few quarters. So then, of course, we do look at it, see if we can get the other three quarters, see if they right. can get a higher amount for the quarters that they were submitted for. Um, so to take a contingency fee on what extra we're able to get for them. Um, but if it's completely done and they're already have qualified for the maximum amount, um, we haven't had that come up yet, but, you know, they can feel free to reach out to us and we can take a look at it at that point. Yeah. Uh, to look at their file. I, I, I got a, I got a feeling that once the, uh... Once these audits start happening, that they're they're going to be uh, there's going to be a mad scramble of people trying to make sure that their files are in order. That's for sure. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, because because again, you know, the the ERTC has actually been around for years. Correct. That's right. Yes. Yeah. So this isn't something new that just came out of of uh, COVID. It's been around for years for people that have have had disasters. It just happens that the president declared the whole United States as a natural disaster area. And that's why people are eligible for this, correct? Yes. Yeah. So that's and and I think that, that lots of times that's something that, that people miss. So it's not uncommon for this to, to have had happen. Um I I'm in Maryland and, and there's not that often that a, a a, a section of Maryland is considered a, a natural disaster area. So I think that's one of the reasons why people have been hesitant and trying to move forward with this also. Mm -hmm. um, 
I guess, what what are some of the common mistakes that you see people making when it comes to the ERTC? Uh, common mistakes, I would say, in terms of them working with a, a vendor now or in terms of them uh, just, not just, pursuing just, ERC? Yeah. Or... I mean, just in general, you know, not, you know, is it that they're not applying? Is it that they're... Um, uh, you know. Right. Yeah, I can cover that. Yeah, just really yeah. Uh, not applying and thinking that they either don't qualify or don't qualify for enough to make it worth their time to pursue it um, right. because they either think on their own. We've had many business owners, you know, even once we're in contact with them, they email us or get on the phone. They're like, you know, from what you sent me, the, I don't qualify for this. Take me off the list. You know, even before explaining how they can qualify. And, right. you know, we have a detailed email messaging that goes out trying to explain that but it really takes you know just five minutes with the business owner th their time to explain yes you can qualify for it if you were affected in these different types of ways and them just hearing that then they're like okay well you why don't we talk about this further and we have a whole dedicated website that you know shows all these different ways that you can uh, apply for it and and qualify um, so that's really you know and also not speaking to enough people, business owners, they may have heard from a, a family friend or a family accountant or their payroll company. So a lot of business owners were never told about the program. They still right. haven't. The first time they're seeing it is on social media, on one of these ads or on TV. Um, why didn't their CPA or payroll company come to them, you know, in the past few years about this and, and raise that to them? So that's something, you know, I would not want to go and provide business to a payroll company if they have not come to me yet about it or if they said i don't qualify and now the business owner does see that how they can qualify i would not have go running back to the payroll company to try and get qualified because they already told you right. you likely won't or you know you had increased revenue so we're not going to be able to do this um that's what they're really doing because it's just a, a large volume scale calculation that they're doing so if they did have decreased revenues in either of those they're just submitting for those quarters that they can get credits on because they have just you know tons and tons of clients across the country these payroll companies and they're not taking the time to go in to see how to maximize the credits for the business owner and that's their client that's what they should be doing right i think that you know I'm picking up a lot of pieces here, and I think the things for our listeners really to to get out of this is that um, even though your CPA may have told you or your payroll company may have told you, hey, you don't qualify for whatever the reason is, you still want to take a look at it, find someone like a law firm like you guys to be able to help them through it because the um, ERTC has changed. I think it's been four times since it was initially talked about or, or passed. So it's changed, you know, a number of times and, and rules have changed and things like that. Um, you know, even if, um, you know, you are the owner of the company and you only have one employee besides yourself that's a non-family member, you could qualify and it makes yes. sense to talk to somebody and it's not going to cost them anything to talk with someone like you guys Completely free. to see if, if they're eligible. So it's, it's one of those things. It's, I'm going to say shame on you. If you don't uh, at least ask the question, Hey, do I really qualify? Always get a second opinion. That's what I recommend. If you were told no, seek an opinion from another qualified professional, just to double check. Right. And, and what I'm getting from you also is, is that if you guys do this for, for someone, then you guys are going to represent them in an audit if their ERTC were to ever be questioned by the IRS. That's right. A, a complete full audit all the way to that for free, right. um, which I haven't heard anyone else uh, do so. Yeah, yeah. The payroll companies certainly aren't doing that. That's for sure. So, all right, Michael. What I mean, we've gone through a lot of stuff. This is definitely a complex topic, but I but I think that you know we've gotten the point across to to our listeners that 
you got to find out if you if even if you have already applied, you may want to have somebody go through it again for you just to make sure that you did qualify uh, or or that you got all the money that you were entitled to. That's right. Exactly. Um, so what have I not covered with you on this that you wish I would have asked you? Uh, it was pretty thorough. I would say also for referrals. Um, so if there's any business owners out there listening, um, uh, especially attorneys that are listening, anyone that you send our way, um, we can work out a referral arrangement for those. Um, so a lot of these business owners, right. they have many friends that are business owners. Um, you know, I do a lot of law firm conferences on this topic. Um, the law firm owners have thousands of clients that they have represented or currently represent right. uh, to reach out to those clients and prior clients, those business owners, have you, you know, applied for the ERTC? It may be something to look into, um, you know, to help out your fellow colleagues, friends, and family members and spread the word about this to, you know, get the government money that they're entitled to through this program. Right. Great. So, Michael, if, if people want to reach out to you, talk to you about the ERTC or maybe even some product liability issues, how can they reach you? So we have a dedicated landing page. It's uh, www.ertcadvisors.org. Um, that's for ERC, our law firm website, which also has a dedicated page is thelakelawfirm.com. And our main phone number is 888-LAKE-LAW. Great. Hey, I really appreciate your time, appreciate your expertise on the ERTC. I think, again, this is something that that people really need to look at. Um, you know, times are times are tough now, so this would be a great time to be able to apply for this. Yes, you may, you know, we're, you know, we're in January, so you may not get your money until, you know, June or July, but it'll be a great time to get it then um, to, to reinvest in your business. Like you said, maybe put in your retirement account or something. Michael, thanks a lot for your time and your expertise on, on ERTC. I think it's really something important everybody needs to, to know about. So this week, our guest was Michael Bloom, who's a partner with the Lake Law Firm. Thank you. Thank you for having me. See you guys next week. This show has been produced by Market Domination, LLC. To discover how you can have your own show completely done for you and turn it into a real published book and become the authority in your marketplace, go to www.marketdominationllc.com slash podcast offer.